National Podcast Day is September 30th, but what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. National Podcast Day is September 30th. But what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, this is the Awesome Cast. We're ready to get geeky, I geeky today with an all-star cast ready to uh, hit this up. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And oh my God, is it mayhem today? What the hell is going on? Yeah, it all fell down. I got well first well, on the couch. We got uh, John Chichilla at Chilla. That's me. And just yeah. be careful because if the dog knocks that, we're gonna go out. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or bites it. Hey, Duck, you guys can move. Just don't move. Duct tape just, podcasting. Just, this is gonna be a long show, unfortunately. Go, also go away, go with away. us in studio, AJ, AJ Kuptik at AJ Kuptik on the Twitter. I've broken everything, <laughs> everything. in the last like five minutes. I broke this mic. Okay, okay. I broke these headphones. I broke his headphones. We're everything. gonna do this show. The hangout was broke. Hangout was hangout broken. Was, hangout was broken. Finally, on, on the hangout with me after I don't even know what went wrong. Hangout <laughs> just said we just are not going to connect audio for anybody. I guess nope. uh, Mike Pound, a a print person in a print print news person in Pittsburgh. Is it? Wait, is that right? Did that's, I get that right? That's, yes. um, that's about as cryptic as we should we should probably be at this point. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize we had to be cryptic about that. <laughs> How you doing, sir? I'm doing well now that I can hear everybody and awesome. you guys can hear me and everything's everything is beautiful. Awesome. Jeez, where do we start? I, I don't even know anymore. Well, let's start uh, with our this, awesome things. Well, this is well, this is the awesome cast. This okay. is the awesome cast. It's one thing. Uh, we, you can uh, join us here live every Tuesdays. We we try to get going around six thirty p.m. Eastern time. Sometimes. Or you have some very interesting not show things that are happening, um, as today. And uh, you can also join us on Twitter. We're at tw uh, at AwesomeCast on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus. Uh, we're an Awesome Cast on YouTube. You can also follow us on subscribe to us on YouTube, please. Yes, please. And also on uh, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. Um, and also, please drop us a line, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com, and check out the site at AwesomeCast.net. Uh, like I said, we do start with our awesome things of the week, although I, I think we're kind of parlaying that because everything going on. Well, no, I have an awesome thing of the week. I saw this okay. great thing on Kickstarter. I'm <laughs> completely kidding on that. <laughs> we do have an email about somebody has a contributed awesome thing of the week. We do? So I want to touch on that before we get to all the I news for today. Um, from uh, our, our, our buddy, um, I didn't write it down, so it's not here, and now I've just... Uh, Damn it! This this is why you needed the notes, right? It's, this is why I needed the notes that crashed on the other computer because the thing went away. Well, and I was hoping a, I could solve it. Is it, it's is it the Habitat RPG? No. Alex Cars. Oh my God! What is wrong with me? Alex Cars. So uh, Alex Cars said had an awesome thing of the week. As a shout out to a really awesome person, he wants to thank Raheem from Apple Customer Support for helping him rescue his iTunes and iCloud account from some random hacker. You're a miracle worker, and I salute you. So Alex Cars. Uh, might have had celebrity nudes, but Apple wrested his account away from a hacker. Thank you, Raheem. I'd also like to have a personal shout out to the fine folks at Apple customer support for fixing my iMessages on my desktop. That's a Mac. It's a Mac in some form. Um, and they were kind enough to allow me to activate it. So I want to thank them 
from the deepest bottom part of my heart, thank you, sir, for allowing me to answer questions about my kindergarten teacher. <laughs> what? <laughs> my, that's my one of my security questions is who my kindergarten teacher was. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh god, awesome. I couldn't remember that. Like, wow. Uh, so with that, that, like, like it's a kindergarten teacher. Wow. No, no. I started huh. like I stopped at like second grade. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I things happened today. There was an Apple event. Um, I think before we get to the products, um, how about that presentation, guys? The presentation itself was awesome. The video feed getting there, not in so much. No. No. I I understand it was it was really nice. The uh, the fine folks, whoever was doing the video stuff, the video, the live video of, of the event, will likely not be doing live video of Apple <laughs> events in the future. Uh, the very basically, uh, they had like a really nice video going of like all the people entering the room, and then all of a sudden, at like nine fifty five, nine fifty six Pacific, they switched to like bars and music, which sure. Fine, you're you know getting your feed switched, getting everything ready, because they were just running like a bunch of test shots of the of the of the crowd and playing some music. At ten o three, they were still on bars and music, <laughs> and then uh, they eventually got to the presentation. At which point, a live Mandarin translation of everything that was going on was talking over everybody talking. So Tim Cook is talking and saying, "We have a wonderful event. Thank you for coming out." And Mandarin Chinese, a very nice lady mm. speaking, every, translating everything live into Mandarin Chinese over the video. And they tried shaking it multiple times. They were like, okay, well, maybe let's uh, let's drop the feed and let's bring it back. So they went back to the bars and music and then came back and it was still there. And then they did it again. They did it like three or four times and it failed miserably. Um, I'm glad I just watched a, a bunch of live blogs because I was yes. in meetings. So I couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to watch or or anything anyway. I was um, I was sitting at home. I was on a hangout with Sword. And so the two of us were talking about it and we were having a good chuckle at the fact that they could not keep this up. So he was listening to the Twit stream and I had the Mac rumors and the Verge live blogs in the background and then I was just sitting there just constantly like closing and opening the stream. And I got most of it. It's but already I think it's already up on their website. Well, I'm sure it is. Uh, I'm not seeing it just yet. On the or... front on the front page. Oh, wait, it's on the... Well, wait. Oh, maybe I have to reload it. It says watch the keynote. It does say watch the keynote, but it doesn't it doesn't actually, go anywhere? Well, it goes to... Hold on, I actually Where's, have it up here because I was trying to manner. see if we had some video. Um, it goes to their live-ish feed. Um, oh, and it says it'll be available, available shortly. shortly. All right. Yeah, and... But although I got to say, their presentation where they had their own kind of live social stream... Yes, they had their own, like, live blog-ish. ...was... And there's some tweets that they shared through, um, and there were pictures of their videos or anything. And they popped up on here, which was great because I was doing I was doing the live tweets on Awesomecast, yeah, on Twitter. Um, and anytime there's like video or audio, <laughs> anytime there's or video or audio, um, uh, it was cool to to kind of share that through. Yeah, I mean, they, they had a lot of really... I, I actually uh, resized my, my window so it was just the video because I didn't want to see their live feed because mm -hmm. that's just distracting. Um, probably would have been far more entertaining than the actual, like, reloading the keynote. Um, so let's 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 dive in. Let's I've been. So let's start with wish. what they did. The iPhone, of course, iPhone six and iPhone six plus. Yep. We're looking at a four point seven and a five point five inch phone. What what is the five uh, S? The five S is four. four. This is a four inches. Four inches. Four inches. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're going from a four inch screen to a four point seven inch screen, and a five point five inch screen, and that uh, that is a big difference. Um, if you go to phonearena.com, if you'd like to see the real true difference here, go to phonearena.com and uh, go to their phone size comparison, and it allows you to bring up any model of phone, like Samsung Galaxy S5, LG G3, so on and so forth, and it allows you to bring them up and set them next to each other, and you can actually calibrate the pictures so it's the actual size of your phone, so you can see how big the device is next to your real-life phone, like next to your monitor, which is kind of neat. Um, they are in... We are now firmly into uh, like large Android screen range. They are not playing around. the uh, the five The iPhone six plus is a Galaxy Note four size device, 
They are not playing around anymore. They are going directly at this. Um, they didn't necessarily revolutionize anything, but I'm happy to see them go up. Uh, one of the things I kind of missed when I went from the Galaxy Nexus, so that's a 5S next to the S5 and the G3. Um, if you're on video. If you're on video. Um, and, and you could see that it, it was a distinct size difference. Um, I heard a lot of people before, you know, when all the rumors were coming out, they were saying they were going to go 4.7 and 5.5, uh, say that they were kind of hoping that there would be a 4-inch model. Um, Apple has firmly put their, their eggs in the 4.7 and 5.5 basket, basically saying, we can make it thinner, we can make it weigh just a shade more. Um, I think the 6 weighs only like a half ounce more than the 5S, mm -hmm. um, but they went to bigger screens. This is the first time, well, you can't get a phone smaller than a 5 series right now. Uh, now. now, correct. Like in, yes. Or at they, least the in four, a week. The 4S RIP. Mm -hmm. um, the 5 is, the 5C is now the base model. The 5S. $0. I'm sorry, the, five, the 4S, that's still, a, that's still a powerful damn phone. Now wait, now think, imagine people going to the store getting the free iPhone and they get the 5C. Which is the same, getting, it's the same chip as the 5. Yeah. The 5C has the same chip but as I'm, the 5. I'm saying, it's still like, an iPhone. I was, yeah, but it's still I was an having an this conversation 5. earlier. So so typically, I'm not going to do Next or anything. I'm going to wait another year. I'm going to hit the 6 Plus S. I don't know. Um, next year. Uh, so I'm going to hold on to my 5S. This gets moved down to my folks that have the 4S. I'm I'm getting those 4S's back because they're decent video machines. Yeah. yeah. They shoot HD video. Cameras. I clear those off and just do video on them. I can do something with that properly. Mm -hmm. Now... And, and and as far as like okay, well, will the video really be that good? It shoots HD video yep, shoots, at a pretty decent clip. I think it's yes, this seven, is better. I think it's seven twenty p. At least seven twenty. Mm -hmm. I think they did. It's full ten eighty on on here. Yeah. But for depending on what you need, like you know, for a GoPro kind of situation, those are great. And to have two of them on hand, why not? What's the space on them? Sixteen. Uh, probably sixteen. Could be eights, maybe because mm -hmm. some of them have been replaced with free phones. So. There's that, um, but still, that's that's incredible. You know, that, that's that's the low end. That's like the what the uh, the four S <clears throat> shoots 1080p video at 30 frames per second. I, I I think you could. I mean, that's that's better than, and I think a lot of it sometimes is better than like a three hundred dollar digital points. Yeah, digital, digital point, point shoot. shoot. Yeah, you know, or, or or you know something you get from Best Buy that's a video camera. Well, now you're going to be able to do 60 frames per second. Yeah, 60 on the frames six, per second. The six, on the six, six plus. You I mean, can do 1080p yes, at 60 frames. That's yes, this insane. is better. Yes, the next thing's better. But I, I think there's still like you can do something with that. Like collect a bunch of old iPhone fours and just. Yeah, I mean, so they so they announced the six, the six S, or the six plus. Um, the only difference between the two is the screen size and battery the life. Battery life and the five, the the six plus has uh, optical image stabilization on the camera. The six only has digital image stabilization. So, in case you're wondering what that is, you know when you take a picture and you and you're holding your phone and you and you take the picture and then you wonder why it's blurry. That's why it's they the the the, the camera itself is actually trying to focus and it can't. Um, digital image stabilization helps with that. Optical image stabilization is what's in a DSLR that allows them to take crazy good pictures no matter how quickly you're moving or how shaky your hand is. So, so they didn't push the envelope as far as uh, megapixels. Oh. Uh, like It seems like some of the tech for focusing seemed improved. Yeah. Um, but there, a lot of it's it's going to be handled in, in, in software, which is the way a lot of phones have been doing. It. Smaller, smaller aperture on the front-facing camera. So it'll, the yeah. front-facing camera will do better in low-light situations. Okay. So if you're doing Hangout or you're doing FaceTime. some kind of video FaceTime. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, uh, the the thing that they did, and I know that this is where Android is going to go, why didn't they go 15 megapixels? They made, their, they made their good camera, their very, very, very good camera that people take crazy amounts of pictures with, better. They made it faster to focus. They made image. They put image stabilization in there. The only thing I dislike about it is that the camera lens protrudes out of the case. It is the little smidgenest thing. And if you're wondering, if you if you don't want to wait a week, and you're wondering what I'm wondering what I'm talking about, go to an Apple store or a Best Buy and find yourself an iPod Touch. It is the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. It is a little bump 
that comes out of the back of the out of the back of the device and just sticks out I think it's like a millimeter out of the case or less than a millimeter out of the case it's just this little ring it's a little ring whereas but it's, but it's out there and whereas the, you know the 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 five then is flat flush and, and it's flush yeah it's flush against it so um, I imagine that uh, case makers are going to make sure that they build up the back of the case high enough to s- basically make that, that lens at least flush, if not deeper. Um, speaking of cases, Apple came out with silicone cases for these six, which I'm quite excited about because uh, that's what I put on my phone. This is a like $2 Amazon silicone case, mm-hmm. which is just enough to collect hair and dust. <laughs> um and also just protects the back from scratches. The back of the phone is all aluminum. So it's not like there's bits of glass on the back to break. And you still want to keep the screen on the front open. So you still want to, you can't like just completely cover that up with silicone case. You can't use your phone. Um, so it, it's, it's I, I really like the hardware. It's the leaks that we've seen for the last three months. Um, nothing new there. They come in gold, silver. Uh, and then space gray, space gray is going to be the black one, uh, silver and gold on the, um, on the white one. Uh, I, I really like it. I would also like to point out that in the past they would normally spend hours on the iPhone and do app demos and all sorts of other fun stuff. They spend 41 minutes start to finish on the iPhone, 41 minutes out of a two hour thing. They were like, Oh yeah, here's the new iPhone. They're bigger and they're more awesome. Okay. Next. I've never seen Apple do that before. They like the demos came in. They had like two minutes to get their thing off. Like, I think they did like one game demo and that was it. And they moved on. Um, But the power button switched to the side. On the five. On the the plus. On the plus. They moved it to the side because reaching to the top to hit the power button is kind of insane. Um, Oh, also on the five, five, if you turn the phone to landscape mode, um, it basically operates like an iPad. So the springboard of the the home screen, all the icons turn sideways. The uh, all of the apps show up sideways. So in messages, you have your list of messages, and then you have your selected message on the right. It operates a lot more like a. Uh, it operates a lot more like a like a iPad. It's on the side on both. Oh, it's on the side on both. Look at that. Well, that's awful nice. And it's funny because if I mean if you look at your your iPhone today and you look at the SIM card slot. Yeah. And and you look at one of the new pictures of the phone and look at the SIM card slot. That's about the width. Yeah. Or the height is, of the it, phone. They basically made it like here how <laughs> thick can, how skinny can we make this thing? Oh, let's make it the SIM card slot. So it's a uh it, it's it's really nice. I really I'm they gave it a new design, they made it bigger, but they also had they also kind of kept everything moving from the 5S up. So A7 to A8, M7 to M8, uh, Touch ID comes along with it. And um, Apple Pay. Oh, Apple Pay. I, want I can't some. wait. I want Apple Pay so very badly. Um, what do you think Apple Pay is going to do to all the little wallet gadgets cases that people have? Oh, yeah, they killed the wallet <laughs> case. Um, I'm interested to see... How many people actually put this in? Um, I'm hopeful that it is just the NFC reader and that there's not like a special reader that you have to put in. Because like Sheets has Sheets has had these readers forever mm-hmm. as part of like Visa tap to pay. And I'm wondering if it's the same thing. Because I was saying, able to do tap to pay on my on my Nexus. Someone was saying that the Disney store and the Apple stores were already updating their NFC readers. So yeah. that makes me a little nervous that, uh, and, and when I heard, they, I heard it was the iBeacon readers that they were updating okay. with, with some other NFC technology. Okay. As long as that's true. Cause it, if I can tap to pay, I pretty much no longer need any of the cards in my wallet. I need, let's see, I'm trying to think what I have. In my I need wallet. my I have, security badge for work. Yep. Driver's license, driver's license, about all I have. I have a driver's license and my AAA card, my Costco membership. They're not going to have tapped at Costco. Nah. So yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's some, a handful. There's a handful of cards. My wallet is skinny enough. It's about to get skinnier. Um, the uh, I mean the the Apple Pay thing is really nice. I'm hopeful that that 
pushes Android to also do that. And the reason for that is that this is an actual secure form of payment. Every time you tap to pay, it generates a new card number. So you don't actually have a real card number with your credit card. It generates a new one, uses that one for that payment, and that's it. And then it, it moves so, on. So that, that means and, and it's a one-time thing. It's accepted as a one-time thing, as in like the store can't take that number and charge you again. Correct. They can't, from, from they, an can't authorization. Use, they can't use that to charge you again. And if, let's say, Target gets hacked or whatever store you use that gets hacked, they're getting your one-time number. Yeah, the, they're not getting everything. No information's The one inf interesting thing that they did bring up, no information is backed up to iCloud. Yes, they, they specifically said that the all of the data, all of your cards, everything that you have is stored on mm -hmm. the phone, mm -hmm. just like your fingerprints. And this is something that they started with... with uh, uh, the fingerprint thing, mm -hmm. you know, but that, that they, they said your fingerprint is on the phone. It's not whatever secured. Nowhere else. It's nowhere else. It's not it's in, in the enclave. Servers. It's That's in the they, enclave, which is apparently this impenetrable place on my phone. I'm you know? interested to see if that's true. I mean, they've had a year with the this like less true. than a year with this about a year with the 5s. Yeah. So I'm interested to see. I've, I haven't heard anybody say that they hacked the enclave. Which sounds I like a really cool, like <laughs> villainous hack plot. The enclave. Have to Is hack that like the hacking, enclave. hacking a Gibson? Sort of, in a way. Um, but yeah, I mean, they have. Uh, it's it's a really. Uh, I, I'm hopeful that this pushes forward. I mean, it, Ben Thompson from Stratechery, uh, who's a sort of kind of Apple analyst, but also just a general uh, tech analyst came out and actually said, he's like, if there's anybody who's going to take on payments and do this correctly, it's going to be Apple. Well, and that's the whole reason it took them so long to get keyboards, third-party right. keyboards, is they said, we're going to do it right. Well, it's not even like doing it right. It's the fact that, what does Apple have? Apple has how many credit cards? 200 million credit cards they set on file? 200 million credit cards. They have a very devoted fan base who are going to update their phones. And you know what Apple users tend to do? They tend to push people to do things that they want them to do. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, Apple Pay is out. You need to update your crap so you get Apple Pay because I want to be able to use my tap to my phone to tap and pay. Not, not entirely because this does not apply to the 5S. It does. Does it? If you get the watch. If you get the watch. If you get the watch, you can use tap to pay. Because you can use the fingerprint scanner. You can use the fingerprint scanner. Is that how they, just, they Well, they also it? put it on the uh, C they put too. it on the C too. Yeah. So there must so you be can do tap to pay with the watch. You pair the watch with the phone. You use the the watch to tap. We'll get to the watch in a second, kids. Don't you worry. <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. Okay. So I so <laughs> okay. That's kind of a, that, that that's, that's a reason to do that. Then okay. Um, you could keep your five S. Get the get the get the watch and use the watch to tap to pay. That was confirmed in the keynote. Okay. Um, I'm really excited to see that because I'm also hoping that this pushes. Basically, people to get the hell away from magnetic card stripe readers yeah. and get away from signing because it is tremendously insecure, as we saw with Target and Home Depot and every other store. Or handing your credit card to the bar and they set it on over by the cash register for your tab. And then everyone takes long. a picture of it. Everybody takes a picture and we all move on. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a... I'm, I'm hopeful that this pushes that forward, mm -hmm. that we start to get more secure payments. You're still going to have to keep your card. Like, I'm not going to be able to give my card up. Did they, did they talk, and I was reading someone talking about it after the fact, is there something where you're going to be able to do, do dual factor? Someone was saying too. It's technically in, in dual a, factor. You tap, and then you have to use Touch ID to off, to it, authorize. Yeah, but, it, but they were saying for there, there's going to be some that could potentially, you tap, fingerprint, and then it actually generates a four-digit pin Ooh. that you then have to punch in. Oh, if they do that, <laughs> forget it. Yeah, I, I'll drop my. I'll, I'll I'll cut my cars up and throw it in a river. <laughs> <laughs> and from, I want from, them everywhere. Speaking, we're talking about security, of course. Uh, we unfortunately uh, we had to lose Mike. Uh, the uh, hangout is not uh cooperating with him tonight apparently he had some internet troubles today uh but he is in the chat room uh he asks uh, uh should there have been a more of a discussion about security especially with pay after the naked picture thing um think that would have been a good pr thing they, to do and that's what they did as part of the pay thing they, they said did. they, they kinda... specifically mentioned that the cards aren't stored anywhere else they're mm -hmm. only on the phone so it was... and they were like you and, and they even said if you lose your phone Mm -hmm. You can go on Find My iPhone, and you can stop it from using the using it as a payment source. 
So, and you can stop payments coming from that phone. So again, one of those things that police departments love where, hey, do you, do your phone got stolen or you, you lost your phone? Go and find my iPhone, lock that crap up, turn off all the payments. And you can do that from another person's phone, a web browser, an iPad, doesn't matter. iCloud.com. iCloud.com. If you have, a, you have access sign to in. a web browser and yeah. most do. Yeah. Go on go, go on a web browser, sign in, and turn sign, off your phone. Sign into somebody else's phone. Yep. You could do it on there too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm uh, the, this is a really cool update. Uh, AT&T, uh, you'll be seeing my order very early Friday morning. I expect it to be in my house when I land on Friday the 19th, cause I'm going to be out of town and I plan on landing at 5 55 PM. And I would like to have something to play with oh. Friday night. I will be in line at the store in the morning. I if if I don't if I don't get a pre order, I will be in line <laughs> at a store in Charleston, South All right, Carolina. So here's the question: I, I I don't know if this was addressed, so both you guys are getting it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what size? Four point seven. Four point seven. Not big on the big. The phone, plus right? no. So if what they say is true, at least the six is getting pretty much an hour of battery life bump for most of its stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, to be entirely honest, I would take the. Um, I would take the, the, the 4.7's battery life and just assume that it's the same as the 5S. I get a full day battery life out of my 5S. I'm going to get a full day battery life out of the 6. If you want more battery life, you got to go get the TV. I mean the phone. <laughs> it's, it's a 5.5 inch screen. If you want to know how big it is, go look at a Samsung Galaxy Note 4. It is the same size. In fact, the, uh, five, the 6 Plus is actually a quarter inch taller. So it, you were, we are definitely into phablet territory. Um, I, if you notice, all of the demos that they were doing were with the 5.5. Five. Interesting. All of the videos that they were showing were with the 5.5. Five. It's the impressive one to show off. It is. Because it's, it's the bigger the big one. one. But I that 4.7 is going to be nice. I had a Galaxy <laughs> Nexus. Big. I had the Galaxy Nexus 4. Point, the Galaxy Nexus that had a 4.5 inch screen. And I thought it was awesome. I was mad. because I, Well, I went from an iPhone 4. No, I was on a 5 already. So I went from a 5 to the Galaxy Nexus. And it was like, oh, hey, I have this extra like half inch of room. This is actually kind of nice. Web pages are bigger. Videos are bigger. And it was really, really nice to watch stuff on it. And then I went back to the 5S and I went back down the 4-inch screen. I, I kind of missed it, I got to be honest. And then I got over it. But uh, I'm happy that it's. I'm happy that the, the, 5, the 5.5 is available. People can stop complaining about Apple coming out with bigger phones. I would love to know what they're going to do for a 7. The, the Moto X is 4.7, which I like yes. the size of the Moto X. The Moto X is really nice. And I, the fact that they went thinner helps. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, no, the the Moto, the new one goes to 5. The new one. Yeah, the original, oh, the original Moto original X. The one goes to 4.7. So if you want to know what a 4.7-inch screen feels like, go to, a, go to a cell phone store, pick up a current Moto X, or the old the old Moto X, and you'll, you'll see it. It's, I'm very happy... Uh, with all the announcements today, I'm happy that they weren't ridiculous, and I'm glad that I'm actually kind of glad that everything leaked, so they weren't like, "Oh wow, look at everything!" And then everybody's like, "Oh yeah, we already saw this for the last like three months. It's been pounded into our faces." Um, then they went to uh, what did they talk? They talked about Apple Pay in the middle, mm-hmm. and then they got to the iWatch or the Apple Watch. I would also like to point out that they they called the new things Apple Pay. And Apple Watch. Getting rid of the eye. Is it, Getting is away it from the eyes. more reiterating we are Apple? This is an Apple thing. You got, uh, here's here's what I think. Uh, previously, when they started the iMacs, the iPhones, the iPods, um, we had the Apple Macintosh, right? Correct. So we had that. That was your core. That was your base. And everything kind of grew around it. Everything attached to your your uh, your Macintosh. They, they need to kind of re-foot their own brand with these new services and devices? Um, I don't think it's so much that they need to like reset everything back to Apple, but I think that th- this is a distinct move. Like the Mac Pro, the MacBook Pro, they got away. The only iDevice, I use those with air quotes for those on the, on the audio, um, the only iDevice on the desktop side is the iMac. There's no iBook, there's only the iMac. True. Sure. I could see them going to just the Apple Mac at some point. You want a Mac? Here it is. And it's the iMac. Um, so oh, speaking it, So th- at that point, then you have the Mac Mini, the Mac, and the Mac Pro. Bingo. Uh, I would also like to pour one out, guys. It's a, a thing that's scooted by. No one saw it. Can we pour one out for the iPod Classic? 
Oh, it's dead. It is gone. It has been removed from the Apple Store. It's, it's the all last. Gone. It's the last of the thirty pin connector. The along the four S, really? the four S, and and the classic yep. are are the last of the forty pin goodbye, or thirty pin. Goodbye, Lightning. No, the iP- the iPad two. They don't still sell that. Though, they don't do sell. They? That's right. They, 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 they got, got rid of it. They got rid of it. Yeah. So that was the last of the thirty pin dock connector. So let's pour one out for the thirty pin dock connector, the iPhone four S, <laughs> the iPod Classic. I hope you have. Uh, well, I mean, they were. You can get a one hundred twenty eight gig iPod Touch now, and I think that's kind of where they. That was the death knell when you could when you could get close. Mm-hmm. Um, and plus, we have. Online storage, yeah, etc. I mean, we really don't. Wi-Fi is pretty much everywhere. Yeah, we 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 we're not. I mean, yeah, pretty much. I mean, we even got a Wi-Fi this week at work. Finally, you finally got Wi-Fi. Got finally got Wi-Fi. <sighs> Man, <laughs> I want to know where all my account fees were going to then. <laughs> good lord, it's 2014. Um, I, I I've been in a number of banks. They don't have Wi-Fi. You're right about that. We, no, we, we we still don't have it in the branch, but we have it now. All right. At least in Here's, headquarters. HQ. Sometimes wait, wait, sometimes wait, wait, you have wait, 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 can wait, wait. We, give me the double shot. Give me the double shot. I got I got an addition to this one. So this man works as a mobility person <laughs> at a bank that is not doing poorly <laughs> at all. This is John. They're building buildings. They're building many buildings. <laughs> many large buildings with many floors. You can Google it. <laughs> they just got a Wi-Fi. I mean, only s- in like four buildings. You see the dichotomy here. <laughs> we have to Mobility. activate. We have to activate the um we have a single DSL line with a with a route a wireless router hooked up to it to activate <laughs> oh, to activate iPads. Yeah. <laughs> And if it yeah. to, this takes me back to the so six we can stations it, in my <laughs> high school hooked up to a 56k modem, back so, we can, <laughs> so we can do it if, if we have to do it remotely from that one area, they have to take a MiFi. Oh, God. Like if you're working on something out in the field, you got to take a MiFi so with dumb. you. I mean, they have. This I is, mean, we had uh, that 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 like DSL line hooked up to like a random wireless router. That's not uncommon in large businesses where you have like a proxy. And you mm-hmm. need to download something. It's not uncommon, but it's gotten a lot better in recent years. My uh, my last customer I was just working with, they have uh, their guest in, their guest wireless goes over a completely separate FiOS connection. Wow! Yeah. So they they separated the guest wireless out from their entire corporate stuff. Probably for the best. Probably uh, for the th- best. This yeah. is the same company that has had like a person posted to let me know everything I wanted to do. I could go to the ATM, and then I went because I had a money order. I wasn't sure if I could do the fancy phone or ATM pay with it because right. who uses a money order? Um, he doesn't listen to the show. Uh, I'm trying to remember <laughs> the last time I used the. Mo- I had to get a money order for something. So I went over to one of the branches. The one I don't usually go to is when I was open oh. later, and uh, it. There's no walk-in at the branch. All it is is the drive-through. So we have this giant building with yeah. one person sitting there. You could go to the ATM. Well, I know that it. now. That's all, no, but no, I need no, the that, person to no, tell that's me that the, I was allowed to. The uh, I remember the last time I needed a money order. When I moved back to Pennsylvania, the uh, I had to go to the DMV, and they don't take credit cards at all or debit cards. And I didn't have a checkbook. They and take I'm, cash. Uh, they do, but I didn't have any. Yeah. Or no, they didn't even take cash. They took check or money order. That was it. And so there's a drugstore that does real nice money order business next door. Wow. Because people forget. And uh, I would like to point out, uh, yes, uh, my wife did tell me to go take a check. And I forgot. (laughs) So I'm a dumb husband sometimes. All right. So uh, let's move on back to the Apple. Of course, uh, before we get to the big one, uh, iOS 8, uh, some people here have had some experience with it. Yep. It's coming out next Wednesday. If you have Yosemite, don't try to update to the GM seed yet because it'll. if you don't really know what you're doing, you'll brick your phone. Hmm. You Make sure you back up. Well, yeah, here, let's 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 break this down here. One, John decided he was going to. So they, they came out with the uh, the gold master version of the uh, basically the final version of iOS 8 that they're going to release next week to developers because they always do this. They always do it a week in advance, make sure all the bugs are worked out before. And we could see, really we, you, we've seen a Monday, Tuesday update. Yeah, they've, they've definitely done like a Monday, Tuesday update before everything comes out because they, because things break. But anyways, the, um, the, the Goldmaster came out today and uh, John here 
uh, decided he was going to update his phone with no backup. And then iTunes crashed on him like too many times. And uh, I had to use my laptop to update him. Because but I was stuck in DF. He was I was stuck, stuck in, in restore mode. He was stuck in restore mode. So I had, he had to he had to un had unrestore to... his phone, and then I could update it. So teamwork, everybody. <laughs> if, if you get stuck in that in that, uh, tweet me or look up Tiny Umbrella. Tiny Umbrella. Yes, it is your friend. Yep. Uh, from the jailbreak days. I haven't jailbroken yes. in a while. Um, so yeah, let's get into the, the, the real meat of the story, the real meat of this this presentation they did today. So not the big with iOS. The, it's just iOS kinda... 8, go back to our show that we did on yeah. uh, Worldwide Developers Conference. Nothing has changed. Um, we've <laughs> had it. John and I have been using it for the last... Since June. I've been on it since beta, the end of beta 1, like two days so before. I, the I, got I, I loaded the iPad beta 1. I loaded the phone beta 2. Yeah. And it's, it's really nice. It's been pretty rock solid. I've only had an issue with mail for a little bit, which is really weird, uh, only because uh, it just wouldn't tell me that I had new ones, and it wouldn't download them until I told it to, which was really frustrating when I'm like, I haven't got any emails in a while. Swipe, 20 emails? <laughs> what happened? So, yeah, that, that's not great. But, th I mean, hopefully that's fixed. Uh, hopefully that won't be a day one bug. Maybe I have to do something to my phone. Whatever. Um, but yeah, I've seen too where where Exchange had to put out an update the, a couple times. We're on Office three sixty five, so uh, Microsoft just does it for us, which is real nice. Uh, it's magical. Um, so Apple Watch. They re they rethunk the uh, UI. There's rethunk. The, they rethunk. rethunk it's it. a rethunk. It's a rethunk. Yep. They've completely they've completely reimagined. The yeah. UI. So they've they, what they've done is they've said, hey, listen, we've had uh, three and a half inch screens and four inch screens, and now we have a 4.7 inch screen, and now we have a 5.5 inch screen. Let's try to do this on 1.5 inch <laughs> screens, and it ends poorly, apparently. Uh, so what they did was they built a iOS. It's iOS on a watch. Um, they still have a touch screen, a multi-touch touch screen. They still have... Uh, iOS, you can still get your text messages, emails, and everything like that. Uh, it requires a Bluetooth connection to your phone, just like uh, the Galaxy, all the Android Wear stuff. Um, but we're now into uh, Apple's wearable. I watched the uh, Google I.O. announcement where they announced Android Wear, and I watched this one. I don't think they did all that work. Between uh, and the difference between Android Wear and the and the Apple Watch in three months, this is a far more baked product. This is a real, this is a real thing. Android Wear is there. Uh, every review I've seen for it has been not great. Um, this looks like far more the real deal. This is an actual wearable. Um, they have a. A, a number of different watch faces, which and that goes back to the the old Nano. Yeah, they've when had they, when they started putting the, the watch faces out. Yeah, for they that. they put the watch faces out for the iPod Nano. So if you remember correctly, the iPod there was a version of the iPod Nano that was square, just like this, and had a clip on the back. And there was a uh, you could get there. Somebody started a Kickstarter to do a band that just had a hook on it, and you just clipped your iPod your iPod Nano to it. The problem was the iPod Nano didn't have Bluetooth, so you still needed to have your headphones plugged into your wrist is weird <laughs> um the this is a bluetooth enabled device you can pair it with your headset you can pair it with your phone um it looks really nice they have uh three versions actually technically six versions so there is the technically hmm. like a hundred versions with all the colors yeah but they have the the watch the watch sport and the watch edition uh, the watch is the uh, the nicest. It's the most normal looking watch. So it's uh, aluminum, has a stainless steel band, um, and looks like a fairly standard silver watch. The uh, watch sport is the uh, rubber band, um, basically made for people to get what sweaty it, on it. And the the metal on the sport looks different. Just a little bit. A it little might be the. Uh, it re it reminds me of the the first iPhone. Yeah. It looks like the first iPhone where well, where it's like that muted metal. You no, know, it's also it says here uh, the 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 regular one is stainless steel or uh, space black stainless. So 
the, the other ones are uh, the sport is alu- uh, anodized aluminum. aluminum. Yeah, that would be that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And uh, which, the addition can be silver or space gray. And then the addition is eighteen karat gold. Yep. In yellow or rose. Yellow or rose gold. If you don't know the difference. Uh, the rose gold is a little bit has more of a pink hue to it, and uh, if if you double check with uh, your significant other <laughs> of choice uh, if they like rose gold or not, it's a it's a a, a hot button topic. Mm. Um, I the iWatch edition is the one they made for the fashiony people. They did not yes. make that. They made that that I wa- so they said it's going to start at three forty nine, and I'm guessing that's the sport version. Starting. You think you don't think you don't think the sport version is going to be a little bit more Mm-mm. cheaper? The cheaper materials. Yeah, okay. it's a, it's aluminum and rubber. Okay, they all have the the, the actual device itself is the same. It's mm-hmm. just a different casing. So I'm guessing the sport is three forty nine. I'm guessing the watch is five hundred. I'm betting that that I want that watch edition is going to be in that seven fifty to a thousand range. I'm not. I, I would believe not it. be surprised. I about completely that. believe it. I mean, they're going. They they're actually putting like real, real, real gold on these things. Um, the when it explains a lot with their their new hires, why yeah. they're over the the design. Yeah, aspect they of hired it. they hired the CEO of Burberry to run their retail. They hired this. Who was the guy from Yves Saint Laurent? I don't know what he did there. He was like a high. But he was a C level guy dude, yeah. at Yves Saint Laurent. They hired uh, the social media guy from Burberry, who is apparently like real good at his job. Um, they have done a substantial amount of work here to make this an actual wearable product instead of this is a watch you can wear that does phone stuff. Mm-hmm. They want this to be a watch first and then happen to do cool things with it versus a device that this is a phone that happens to tell you the time sometimes. I'd put a Galaxy Gear on. Uh-uh. It, I didn't like it. I thought it was bulky. Yeah. I know Riz has one, and he really, really likes it. I've looked at um, it, and it's not real impressive, I don't think. No, it looks like a device that people that was built for people who are not terribly fashion conscious to wear. And it's cheaper, too. I mean, the Galaxy Gear is in that $200 range. The Moto X, or the Moto 360 is 250 Mm-hmm. The other Android Wear devices are in the 200 devices. Or the 360 the, sold out in less than yeah. an hour. And pre-order. if you read Joanna Stern's review, she had to charge it twice a day, and it was huge. Ooh. Yeah, she was not, she yeah, was not I, a fan. I, I, I've regularly heard people complaining about... Well, and they were very careful today not to talk about battery life. Yeah, they didn't say a <laughs> thing. They didn't they say were they were. very careful. And by the way, the reason I said there's not three versions but six versions... Uh, they actually have two different sizes of the device. Mm-hmm. So there is the uh, the one and a half inch version and the one point six five inch version. Now that may seem like a small difference, but if you compare a, a female wrist to a male wrist, they are decidedly different. And if mm-hmm. you go into a watch store and you look at a, man, a men's watch versus a, a a woman's watch, the sizes are decidedly different because they're made for the sizes of wrists. Android and all of the Android Wear devices are built to be one size, and they're all generally in the two inch plus category, which is a large thing. These are all meant, every picture I've seen on, of these devices on everyone's wrist, it's definitely thick. And if you're watching the video, you can see how thick that device is on someone's mm-hmm. wrist. It's mm-hmm. not skinny by any stretch of the hey imagination. Hey, man, I wore the calculator watch uh, when I was in school. You know, I, I'm used to a thick yeah. watch for something like that. It, 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 so am I, I'm, I'm going back to those days to get on the cutting edge of something like this to, again, have a computer on my wrist. It also looked like the bands are really easy to swap. Yes. So it's it's like a... Like, it doesn't look like it pops out easily, but it's like a... Hey, I'm just gonna slide this out, and slide a new band on. So, I, hey, I'm going out. My black leather band doesn't match the brown shoes and the brown belt I'm wearing. Let me slide this out, put the brown band on. It's an accessorizing thing. It is an accessorizing That's- thing, and this is where Apple hired the right people to tell them how to make a watch, mm-hmm. not how to make a technology device. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference here. And in the the apps that are out there appear to be far the, the apps and all the functions that I've seen on this seem to be above 
what we're, Android's currently doing. They're, they're well thought out. Get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, but we're, they're definitely well thought out. We're looking at, uh, if you're on video, we're looking at some footage here uh, of a hands on the verge is doing. Um, do you do you have the screen captures or like the when when I saw the Twitter app I was pretty impressed like okay. you got yeah, you got the, the tweet app. up it gave you very it gave you very discreet options of what you could do you could yeah. retweet it mm. didn't give you it didn't give you as many options obviously as you would have on your mm. phone so now if so you act, if you're watching the video by the way um, all of the people who were in the hands on area trying the watch were uh, very quick to note that they couldn't do anything with it. That's it, running, it's a, running a it's, demo. It's demo. running okay. a demo video, basically. Yeah. Um, I really like the clasp. Um, it's early. It's early. It's I mean, really you, early. You this isn't the, shipping until you, early next year. You hear about year. the stories about about the the original iPhone and how they were like kicking drinks when they were doing the live demo mm -hmm. on stage, you know, to make sure it didn't crash. You know, you know hoping it didn't crash. Well, yeah. uh, they're not going to let people touch this thing yet. This is just a thing. Like this is what it feels like. This is the device. Yeah. Obviously, they're still finishing up some stuff. Um, I'm really interested to see how well that uh, the, the the crown works. Yeah. Okay. So, so the crown. The, the, so it's it's a dial on the side. It's called the yep. crown. Um, Digital and crown. instead of you know pinch of zoom and everything, it, they they made it really sensitive. Yep. Um, and that's kind of your main navigation on top of touch, of course. Yeah. Um, on top of that, there was the touch and tap difference. Yes. You can tell. So they 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 put the crown in because they they specifically pointed out how. Uh, silly it is to pinch to zoom on a one and a half inch screen they were like you're not going to get what you want you're expecting but you're not going to get what you want the uh digital crown is meant to be your pinch to zoom scrolling function uh you can still flick uh with your finger you can still tap on the screen and they also added a uh an additional um they they added an, an additional layer where you tap but if you tap and press harder, it actually detects the fact that you're pressing harder. It's able to detect force, not just the the sensation of a tap, mm -hmm. um, which I think is is uh, really really nice. The, the the crown actually reminds me of the old BlackBerry jog dial. It does in a way, but you're not gonna you can't hit it with. I mean, you can do it with your thumb, but it'd be a pain. Mm -hmm. in the um, home screen interface is this like floating dot kind of situation yes. that's interesting yeah uh, I, i'm wondering if this is going to be similar to what android wear does where all your apps on the on the device it says they did slip in there uh when they're going to demo requires an iphone in order yes. to use an apple watch i don't think we should have expected much else which, but it does show that this is not an independent device to do most of the stuff yes so it is piggybacking on your phone so again i'm wondering uh, are the apps then you sync to your phone you get a little thing that pops up when you install your Twitter app and says, "Do you? Oh, we see you have an iWatch paired to this. Do you want us to push your Twitter to it?" Or they may not even ask you, and they may just do it. Yeah, kind of like how they're going to do with the extensions. Okay. So, like extensions, they're not asking; they're just doing. It's an additional piece in the app. It's just a piece in the app. Okay, but, but that's it, that's still like going from app to app. But I still think that if you're going to the watch, like, what if I have a bunch of apps installed that work perfectly fine on my phone, but I don't like how they operate on my on my on my watch? I, I feel like there needs to be a little, just like, can I use a can I use your management. contacts? Can I use I, just that first? I bet you it's going to be something like that. It's going to be. Can I use your location? You, your your do, camera. Do you want to allow your watch to use this app or yes. something like that? And I could see that happening, and that would be a far better and more usable way to do it versus just telling it, just saying, I'm downloading this app to your watch. I could see them doing that too, kind of like how they're going to do with extensions and basically say, you don't even have to think about installing it on your watch. It's, if it knows that you have a watch, it's going to do it. So let's 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 wrap this up. Crappy had a great question in here. Um, when uh, he visited Pittsburgh last year, Woz, uh, Steve Wozniak, uh, said he was looking for an Apple watch that clearly separated itself from the competition. Did Apple get there? One comment I watched this week in tech, of course, today, uh, as I usually do, uh, like we mentioned before. And they said this looks three generations beyond what we see in any other watch today. Uh, it looks like they've like had everybody else in front of them and learned from all their mistakes. And they've been working at this for a while. And then, like you, you, we ran down the list of how many people were involved in this that they got from other companies. Yep. They approached it the Apple way. Yep. You know? They said we're we're going to be serious about this. We're going to do this, and it's not just going to be some sideshow project that we're going to throw away in two years. Mm -hmm. They want to do this, and they want to do this for real. This isn't an Apple TV. 
this it's is, not a hobby. It's, it's not, not a no, hobby. This is not a hobby. This is like we are going to do this, and we're going to dominate or bust at this thing. Um, well, they, I think they they figured it out. Like you looked at Galaxy, and the, the Galaxy Gear had the camera on it. Okay, if I have a if I have a if I have a watch that requires my phone to use, why do I need to take a picture with yeah, the camera? It, it's looking at what's necessary. It's like what needs they, what needs duplicate between this and the other thing. Right, right, and that's that's kind of why I was like somebody. I think you and I were talking about payments, and you were like, well, maybe if you do tap to pay with the watch, you have to like do the fingerprint thing on the phone, and I was like. Why? Why wouldn't I just, if I have to pull out my phone to do the fingerprint thing, why wouldn't I just pay with the phone? Mm -hmm. I think the, the watch is just going to be used as a unique identifier. It'll be nice too is if you could, you could almost use it like the Moto, what are they called, flips? If my watch is within proximity. You can unlock your phone. From my phone, my phone doesn't, doesn't lock. I'm also really excited to see what jailbreakers do with it. <laughs> <laughs> no one's talked about that yet jailbreakers are gonna break this thing oh of course they are and when they do let the jailbreak development commence because they are going to do bonkers work with it. And, and then the next four iterations of the, of the watch is going to then or the next four iterations of the os is then going to incorporate what the jailbreakers did hey it works right yeah it works i mean i mean google does the same thing mm -hmm. i mean uh the, Apple Sherlock's their own actual legit developers. So Sherlocking, of course, is a term because uh, uh, was it was it was Sherlock the thing they Sherlock put in? Sherlock was the app, they, and, and Spotlight was what replaced it. Yes. And then Sherlock updated a bunch of other stuff, and Sherlock's still around. Don't yeah, worry about yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. Alfred has also come around. Mm -hmm. um, but Spotlight kind of double Sherlock, Sherlock. Because um, it used to be... Sherlock was an app, and if you hit like a keystroke, it popped up in the middle of the screen, and then you could search, and it would pop up right there in the middle of the screen, and then it would go away. Um, Yosemite has that now. Um, but I think that they will... I think I think Sherlock's still around. I know Alfred is, and I know Alfred's a well-respected one. There was Quick... Was it Quicksilver for a while? You Quick could do Silver. the same thing. You could do a, a key combo, and it would bring up a search. Oh, by the way, you can um, take calls on the watch. It has a microphone and a speaker on it. So if someone calls you and it pops up on your watch, you can hit, you know, you can answer and go, "Hey, what's going on?" And I, I thought that was going to be kind of gimmicky on the iPad between the iPad. So in iOS eight, right, with the iPad, I can make a phone call, and the phone call is it actually through coming through my. No, it, it goes through my phone to it make a phone, phone call, phone. but the iPad is what I'm talking over, which sounds gimmicky until you're looking at a pizza menu and your phone is in the next room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's a lot of the stuff that they've done. A, a lot of stuff, and let, and you know, if we want to go back to WWDC real quick, a lot of the stuff that they've done has all been to kind of bring all of their stuff together. So the iPhone being able to be used as an SMS relay, which I really hate when I'm on my work laptop that hasn't been updated to Yosemite because I really <laughs> like being able to text even from my desktop, like mm -hmm. text even non iMessage users, which is really nice. Continuity handoff which is how the watch and the phone are actually doing a lot of their communication. So a lot of this stuff is all kind of playing through all of those gestures. So, you know, when you're on the, the an iOS 8, when you're on the lock screen, you can swipe and get like quick actions like reply or delete. That all went into the watch. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the development that went into the watch kind of rolled over to iOS 8 where they're like, oh, yeah, this would be kind of cool on a big screen, too. And they, they did that. It's um, all the same pace, right? Yeah. I mean, so. I think you're going to find that. I mean, this thing is is probably running some stripped down formation of Unix OS X, just like the uh, the phone, I'm, right? I'm in. I'm I, all right. You buy one? The watch? Yeah, I'm buying one. I'm not. After really? you know what? I after after how much I do like my um, Pebble. Pebble. I've thought about buying a Pebble on a number of occasions, specifically because the Pebble is uh, a lot cheaper. You can get a Pebble, I think, for what one twenty-five or something, something like, like that. that. So, if you're in the market for an iWatch and you want to get a general idea of what it's like to get your to have your phone talk to your wrist, go buy a Pebble. It is a lot cheaper. You will uh, figure out whether or not you actually want that sort of thing. I'm also interested to see how well they do um, how well they do notifications. Like, I want notifications from my wife to show up as a text message on my phone. So, uh, get a pebble. So, get a pebble. 
Uh, I'm interested to see if iOS 8 and the and the watch do notifications better than the Pebble does right now. Because right now the Pebble just sucks in all the current notifications that you have on your phone. And not always all that well. And not always <laughs> all that well. So the problem there is that I don't necessarily want all of my notifications going to my wrist. Not because I don't want people to see them, but because if it hit, if it's vibrating my wrist, mm-hmm. I want it to be important. Like you know, you when know my what? Wa- like when my wife texts me, I want to know. Let's that be that's honest. Okay. Let's be honest. You're gonna get phantom wrist taps, just like mm-hmm. we do. Oh yeah. I I, I was vibrations. sitting there. Well, I wonder if it's gonna be one of those things where so because Apple owns the ecosystem, it's probably gonna be your favorites. So any of your favorite contacts. Mm, I, don't could know. Be I, have the notifier. I have enough problems with notifications where it just gets ridiculous. So I, I, I mean, I have I have like four people in my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has to be important, or it's like a dot, like almost like the. Um, it's like the, it's like it's like tweets, you know. Yeah. Um. It, it, and and I think like one difference was you know I I thought that you know uh this was an issue I thought like when when Chuck broke glass it ran down the battery like nothing right mm-hmm. uh, but he had all of Twitter going to it whereas when well, I, I don't see that I don't I don't and, and see that making phone. a difference on the Pebble and, and on my on my notifications it's just the favorites um they were they're poo pooing the the Twitter like I don't know about Twitter on there that's that's too small it's like it's 140 characters and it's not everybody right no way it's basically whatever you're getting right here on the front of your phone is going to be a notification on there I would think to start with Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. Uh, if they that that's going to be the fun part because right now um, the Pebble doesn't do that terribly well. Android Wear is okay at it, um, but also kind of has the Pebble problem where it doesn't. It just sucks in everything because it doesn't know what to do with them. Mm-hmm. I'm hopeful that Apple, because this is their device, they yeah. can. But there's there's a lot of more control going over. on there. Now I'm wondering if Watch Kit will be able to use will be able to play with the <clears> Pebble. <throat> think about that. And so of, the Pebble could rewrite their firmware to integrate with WatchKit. And right. the Pebble app could then leverage WatchKit. Right. I could see that. Yeah. Now imagine that. Now you get all the power of the of the watch, but you get it in a not fancy, colorful, super awesome device. You get it in a cheaper looking device. Because it is a cheaper looking device. Yeah. Like there is no, no doubt. Even the Pebble Steel looks real cheap in comparison. So... Uh, yeah, that's the that is the iPhone now. Oh, and they uh, just real quick because I don't want to talk about this. Uh, uh, YouTube, their new album is free to anybody who has an iTunes account. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like HomeKit got snuffed. Like Home, HomeKit there should have been something. HomeKit more. didn't get snuffed. HomeKit is in iOS eight, and they were like, "Just go watch the keynote from WWDC. We have things to talk about." Yeah, because yeah, they didn't definitely. talk about HealthKit either. They, yeah, only, they, they only really touched on health kit with the fit with stuff so in the watch. This is the, watch. the first time they've been in this venue, this size venue for an announcement since, what do we say, the iMac? No. Wait, no, no. There was the other thing. There was the iMac, and there was also the iPod Hi-Fi. Hi-Fi. Now, let's take a trip I don't back. I remember this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ready? Let me take you on a trip back to 2006 before a lot of people were down with Apple. This is before they had the iPhone. This is before a lot of things. In 2006, around October, they came out with the iPod Hi-Fi because they wanted to come out with their own speaker dock for the iPod. And the idea was that, hey, Hi-Fis are pretty great. You want great sound coming out of your iPod. Here's the best possible sound you can get. It was a $349 enormous speaker dock. Ooh. There is a, there I do is a remember picture. seeing that in the store. Yeah, that is the iPod Hi-Fi. So it was a giant so the box. thing that everybody else did. Yeah, but it was a bigger version. This and is like the giant uh, record cabinet I remember having when we were ki- when I was a kid. Yep. Like, and so they they came out with it as a as a speaker device, and that uh, I believe was the last device they had in in the in the Flint Center. Um, now. To be fair, uh, before that was the iMac, and before that was the original Mac. Yes. So they yes. are now, uh, in my opinion, and this three for four. this was probably the height of the iPod, right? Oh yeah, this was I this mean, was the, peak the iPod, iPhone. and it sold so very poorly that it was gone ten months later. Oh, guess what came around about ten months later? iPhone. The iPhone came around. It's a phone. It's an iPod. Are you getting it, guys? It's a watch. It's an Apple. 
Like that doesn't work anymore, does it? Um, like how, what, how does that metaphor work now? It's a watch. It's an iPad, iPod. No. It's 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 uh no it's, it's a communicator. It's a, watch. it's a communicator. It's a watch. It's a tricorder. And, and, and you can tell your pulse. Yes. By that the way, thing. by the way, death the Fitbit. Holy crap. R.I.P. Fitbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, Fitbit's building all their stuff in with HealthKit. Yeah. Well, so you, yeah, Fitbit's yeah, going to be coming out. I have. Yeah, well, it, it, it how much is, is I use it? How you much know, is a but band? I don't have it on my wrist. So what? How much is a band? Uh, like eighty. That's the big difference, like kids. 80? If you 100? just hundred, no, we paid hundred, I think, for right. hers. So but, still, but granted, it depends on the fit. Granted, that the you're... difference. You're not going to sleep with an Apple Watch on. No, to no, get no, the night because no, no. you're going to have to charge it. That's the difference, and and that little nub and wrist thing that 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 my wife wears, she wears for days yeah. because it's only doing one thing. Um, so this is the collection of things. Yeah, into one um, one deal. So I, I so it, it's it's. Kind of it's all in one of all these features we've seen uh, individual devices doing. Um, some people that's going to be fine for. And, and so uh, certainly I'm not going to be, you know, running around doing crazy sports stuff, getting my steps uh, with a $350 device, $350 device on my wrist. <laughs> so um, they did have, uh, they did note that the iPhone 6 has a barometer in it. So now I can have a weather station. <laughs> no, it's uh, the idea is to the idea is to detect changes in elevation, so you get proper credit for for stairs and not just regular. Which steps. was the latest uh, Fitbit thing that got recalled? With, yes, because the, of the flex. Band, the flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a coworker of mine had it. And he had like a rash yeah, broke yeah. out on his hand because of it. It was nasty. That's, na that's nuts. So, uh, yeah, guys, on that. So Apple Watch, uh, three hundred fifty dollars to start. So start yeah. saving now. Coming twenty fifteen. Um, I think we all agree it's 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 definitely uh, uh, beating out any watch thing. I I want to see what this does to the watch sales over the next few months in comparison, because are watch sales real high right now? Are, are, is, I mean, you got to remember number? that you got to remember that watches are there's a big range in there. Yeah. So you could true. go to Target and buy a eighty dollar hundred dollar watch, right? And it'll last you until it breaks, and it's a quartz watch, and you get a new one. Or you go up to like the twenty thousand dollar Rolex Submariners, and you are into big time watch land. And I, I will say this: my father in law and my brother in law are both big watch guys. I'm interested to see what they think about it. Like they have the, they are not they they would be like oh three fifty that's not so bad. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. The people who have the people who really really like watches three fifty is cheap. It is on the low end. People like us. Hey, John, hold yeah, up the list. Yeah. Let's hold up our wrist. I don't even have my Pebble on today because it died. Well, you don't have your Pebble on, but like, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't have a watch. And I, I'm like, eh, 350, I don't wear a watch now. I don't want to drop 350 on a device <laughs> that I'm going to hate after a week. I don't know if he's late to, to the party, but Alex uh, says, asks if it's going to work with this Moto G. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope sorry guys all right guys thanks a lot hey let us know what your thoughts on the apple watch on the twitter at awesome cast uh join us here live next week at live.sorgatronmedia.com at 6 30 p.m eastern time we're at awesomecast.net on facebook on the google plus you can also communicate us with us there um awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com is the email address uh, and uh also uh, uh big thanks to mike allen pr uh, on the Twitters uh, for doing the tweets and the notes all night long. Uh, and uh, check us out, subscribe to us, comment on us, share us, please. Uh, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, iHeartRadio. And please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash awesomecast. And please uh, consider supporting the show so we can improve we can, the show yeah, for so we one can thing. Not break everything so we can not break everything when, uh, when, when AJ comes in. Every week. So, um, sorry, sorry. Yeah, guys. yeah. Um, also, hey, big, uh, big things coming up. Uh, the next event, if you're here in Pittsburgh, I believe that's this Thursday. Uh, you go to nextpittsburgh.com. Five companies, five minutes each. Five local craft beers, maybe more. Uh, so that's that's. That doesn't sound like a. That doesn't that sound like, a, sound bad like thing. a bad time. No, no. no. Uh, so that looks pretty cool. That's this Thursday. Ohio Linux Fest coming up October 24th and 26th. I talked to somebody that's an organizer over there. Uh, so you'll probably be hearing a little bit more about that as we uh, go into that. And uh, keep an ear out on podcampispirg.com is all I'm going to say there um, for other things coming up in the next few months. Uh, so with that, thanks to our chat room. You've been an awesome audience. Have an, Have an awesome, awesome week. week.